Joining me now are Congressman Jim McDermott, Democrat from Washington, and Joel Berg, Executive Director of the New York City Coalition Against Hunger. Thank you both for being here. Good to be here. Thank you. Congressman, what do your Republican colleagues say to you when you tell them how much their policies are really hurting real people, real poor people? Well, they don't believe it. Well, they, they, they're not listening to the Pope. You and the Pope are on the same wavelength. The I income equality is just going by most of these people. What they ought to be do, done is require that they go to a food, to a food bank in a church somewhere right. in their neighborhood and stand there and talk to the people. You would find out these are not people who are not trying. They're not people who are taken from the public. They're not people who want to be there. They're people who are ashamed in many instances to be doing something they never thought they'd be brought to. And they're having difficulty. And we're the richest nation in the world. And, well, when Jesus had those you know, five loaves and two fishes, he didn't charge food stamps. He didn't ask anybody how much money they had. He fed them because they were hungry. And that's and he really didn't where call we ought them, to be. He didn't call them names. You know, Joel, a recent he, government report shows 49 million Americans don't have reliable access to food. That means one in seven families struggle to get enough to eat. Put this in perspective for us. Well, Reverend Al, the other day I met a woman putting herself through college with two kids. She just lost $45 a month in benefits. These are not statistics. These are not lazy people who don't want to work as mischaracterized by the right and their horrible racial undertones to that. Two-thirds of the people on the SNAP program are children, senior citizens, people with disabilities, and working people. They are struggling people, and these benefits are needed until they get back on their feet. Two-thirds fall in the categories you name. Two-thirds. The stereotypes of the right just aren't true. Now, Reverend Al, you've been so forceful in talking about the fake attack on voter fraud. It's right. the same as the fake attack on food stamps fraud. It's extraordinarily, extraordinarily rare. Secretary of Agriculture Vilsack and his great team in the Obama administration at U.S have done a remarkable job of increasing access to these programs while holding fraud down to its lowest level in modern history. It's about 1.3 percent. Over the last decade, 2 percent of the members of the House of Representatives have pled guilty to crimes. So they really should be looking a little closer to home and not at struggling families. Congressman Mother Jones reports that Speaker Boehner has shot down several proposed compromises on the farm bill because the food stamp cuts weren't deep enough. Speaker Boehner's office is denying the report, even though it's confirmed by Democratic aides. How did cutting food stamps become one of the GOP's top priorities, Congressman? They don't want a safety net, Al. They don't want anybody to get anything when they need it. But you think about it, the food stamp program, the lower ranks in the military, the first and second and third rank, if they have a family of four, are almost always eligible for food stamps. That's right. how low we go in this country. Even people who fight for our country, we will deny their children food stamps. And the Republicans who do that simply, I guess, have never known anybody who didn't, wasn't born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Because anybody who's been out there and been going, you go to the cupboard and there's nothing there, and you have to say to your children, we don't have anything to eat, or we've got one slice of bread, we can split it, or we've got one pork chop, and all five of us can have a piece. That kind of thing exists in this country, and it's wrong. You know, Joe, talking about it's born with a silver spoon in your mouth, we're having kids now being born with no spoon in their mouth. And I mean, this is what's frightening. But, the, you know, the Pope, the Pope now, not a politician, the Pope, has directly attacked the right-wing theory of a trickle-down economic theory, the theory mm -hmm. that, saying, quote, some people continue to defend trickle-down theories. This opinion, which has never been confirmed by facts, expresses a crude and naive trust in the goodness of those wielding economic power. Meanwhile, the excluded are still waiting. This is what the Pope said, uh, Joel. Now... Rush Limbaugh, the head of the Republican Party, responded today to the Pope. Listen to what Rush had to say.
the Pope here has now gone beyond Catholicism here, and this is pure political. Pope Francis went further than previous comments, criticizing the global economic system, attacking the idolatry of money. This is just pure Marxism coming out of the mouth of the Pope. Now, I know that he was the uh, godfather of conservatism. I didn't know he was the interpreter of theology on what went beyond Catholicism. Well, I must say, if Rush Limbaugh has a problem with this pope, he'd probably have a real problem with Jesus Christ, Reverend. As you know, he spent his whole life talking about the need to fight hunger and fight inequality. It's in the Old Testament, it's in the New Testament, and whether you're a believer of his teachings or you just believe in math, you have to understand the trickle-down theories aren't working, and that's why we're so thrilled the White House has forcefully come out against any additional snap cuts that's so important well uh, I, I'm tempted to quote Jesus telling a rich man to give all he has to the poor but I won't do it tonight I'm <laughs> not going to do that congressman Jim McDermott save it for Christmas Joel, save it for my Christmas show Joe Burke thank you both <laughs> for your time tonight have a great Thanksgiving thank you we'll uh, see.